Zeit. Eine gute Sache braucht Zeit. Für mich ist die Timing sehr, sehr wichtig, vor allem geschäftlich. Man macht nicht ein Produkt im falschen Timing, das niemand braucht. Das ist egal, wie gut das ist. Timing is everything. Um, you can throw a shitload of money on something and, and nothing will happen. Um, you can put the right amount of money and the right people in the right time on something and magic happens, kind of. Ich war eigentlich in Berlin. Ich habe Produktmarketing studiert. Während dieser Zeit kannte ich jemanden, der sagt mir, ey, wir mal Superplatt in Europa verkaufen. Mein Name ist Siu Wang, ich bin Co-Founder von Orage. Ich habe immer gedacht, Uhren ist von einer Maschine, kommt eine Uhr raus. Ich habe nie selekte Teile gesehen, das war sehr interessant. Dann habe ich dann gesagt, okay, dann mache ich selbstständig. Ich habe drei, vier Monate in der Fabrik gearbeitet, damit ich verstehe die Produktion. Da habe ich Schweizer Botschaft angerufen von Berlin und so immer in Bier gehen, weil ich, ich habe gesehen, wie so alle Uhren viermal sind Bier. Ich muss mal hierher kommen. Sie und ich met on 1st of August exactly in this building here 23 years ago. Ich bin der Andi Faisel. Ich bin der Geschäftsführer von Orage. I didn't have any idea of watches. I was doing mountain bikes and I needed someone to bring me to Taiwan. And she is Taiwanese and a friend of mine was working for her and then she took me to Taiwan. I learned about how she is actually buying components in Taiwan and in China and in Korea and Japan and she learned how to make bicycles. And then after a while we got married. And in between that, we decided actually to move her away from OEM business into a brand because we thought that's probably necessary on the long run to, to protect her very successful business. It was at the time where the Swatch Group uh, announced that they want to stop the delivery of movement and so you was looking to be able to have some movement other than Swatch Group movement. My name is Florian Sorex and I am professor at the Haute École d'Ingénieurs de Châtel for the watchmaking engineer. Das war eine Zeit, dass ETA möchte stop delivery und alle kämpfen von mechanischer Uhr weg. Und damals war Florian der Direktor von Roche, hat uns dann Roche besichtigen lassen. So, I was working in uh, Roche Manufacture and they come uh, visiting us. Roche ist eigentlich die most high-end Uhrwerkfirma in der Schweiz. Ich habe natürlich sehr viele Erwartungen. So we presented all the movement and uh, we tried to speak a long time, but at the end it was not possible. Ich muss sagen, dass ich war ein bisschen enttäuscht und dann auf dem Weg zurück nach Biel haben die mir gesagt, machen wir eigene Uhr weg. When I heard this lady speaking like that on such a huge problematic to producing a mechanical movement from zero without any experience, I said, it's, <laughs> it's amazing, it's not normal. I, I, I cannot let her doing that on, on her own. I need to follow her and see what's going on. Eigentlich war Florian war von K1 von Anfang an schon dabei. Unser Consultant war er. Er hat auch sehr viel Know-how beigebracht. Ich habe von Florian gelernt, Urwegentwicklung. Man braucht drei verschiedene Leute. Eine ist Mathematiker, 
Einer ist Ingenieur und einer ist Uhrmacher. Wir müssen das Komplex, sonst geht das nicht. Jonas haben wir erstmal in unser Team. Das war 2012. Ich habe die Chance bei Orasch mit 28 Jahren bekommen und habe das Vertrauen von Zü vom ersten Tag an gehabt. Wir hatten die Möglichkeit, von Anfang an die Technik so umzusetzen, wie wir denken, dass sie richtig ist. Und das bringt Freiheit. My name is Jonas Neidecker. I'm head of Technik at Orage. To be able to develop a movement, you, can, you cannot do that alone. It's too complicated. You need to, be, to work in team. You have some people who start the development from Greenfield, like me. And you have other people who overtake this job and make it reality. That's Jonas in the game. And if these people that are completely different in the mindset can work together, then you, you get real good product. The Florian is an außergewöhnlicher Mensch. Auf der einen Seite ein extrem guter Techniker, auf der anderen Seite ist er enorm kreativ. Er war eigentlich immer wie eine Art Mentor für mich. Er war immer da, hat unterstützt und er hat einfach ein Netzwerk, das jedes Problem lösen kann. When you start to develop a movement, you always said yes, but why? You can find everywhere a lot of movement. So you need to bring something new in this movement. That's innovation, technology, way of thinking from the engineers, and then you can put innovation in your movement. But we <laughs> tried to uh, find also story around this technology, like the, the Silicon Escapement. The clients care about, okay, what it brings to me. So we try to use this efficiency to bring something new to the, to the customers. And that's also something beautiful. Silicon components um, are all around us and they also heavily influenced the watch industry effectively since 1992, where it started. And we use silicon technology and silicon components to, to improve the performance and the precision of the watch. And it is clear that every top-notch product, Swiss-made watch, uh, will be based on silicon components in, in the core componentry. My name is Landon Serling. I am the marketing director at Arage. The unique aspect of Arage is that we truly are developing our own movements. Typically in the industry, um, there's a few movement suppliers that if you are a watch brand, you go to them, they provide you with the movement. The movement is like the engine in a car. You know, it's like uh, you name the automobile company saying, hey, we need an engine, let's go over there to those engine manufacturers and put it inside of our car whereas we are actually developing it ourselves. Most still question that because there is this term that's something I don't really like, developing an in-house movement, and it creates this um, false understanding within the, the watch community that absolutely everything inside of that watch has been developed inside that building. What most other companies do is they, they play with an existing architecture. We start and we create our own architecture. We're laying our own bricks in the movement game. Ja, die Schweizer Uhrenindustrie ist eine sehr konservative Industrie. Die Entwicklung von Technik, die Entwicklung von Produkten hat zweitrangigen Stellenwert. Und Orage kommt aus einem komplett anderen Bereich. Also wir kommen eigentlich aus der Entwicklung und Produktion von Uhrwerken raus und wir decken einen ganz anderen Bereich ab als die meisten Uhrenmarken. When I started to work in the watch industry, that was the beginning of the quartz watch. And we stopped to produce and even think about mechanical watch. Everything was lost. 
15 to 20 years after that, the mechanical watch grew again. Nobody <laughs> in the big group of watchmaking industry, nobody knows about mechanical watch, how to produce, how to assemble, how to check this movement. It was an amazing time for a guy like me. We needed to restart from zero. Florian, he had 25 years long the whole technique die in seiner Generation verloren gegangen ist, in großen Firmen wieder aufgebaut. Durch die krise ist die mechanische Uhrwerk Know-how sehr viel verloren gegangen. Weil das war eine Krise, alle haben keine Arbeit, alle Fabrik hat ihre Maschine weggeworfen. Dadurch ist sehr, sehr, sehr viele Sachen verloren. Das wieder zu finden, ist schwierig. Und nach dieser Quartz krise hat das Swatch Group alle Reste nicht hier noch unter der Gruppe. Also wir haben keinen Zugang. Das war schwierig. Wir haben dann verschiedene Umwege gemacht. Nachhinein finde ich gut, dass wir dann diese wirklich Kerntechnik beherrschen kann. Aber an, den, an, der, an der Zeit war nur zwei Entscheidungen zu treffen. Hören wir auf oder machen wir es weiter und man muss Umweg finden. Ja. We actually sank three companies on this journey to get to this movement. And then, of course, you, you just sometimes think, oh, you're stupid. What are you doing here? But at the end of the day, it's never an option to give up because we knew what we were starting. Yeah, we needed a couple of years longer and a couple of millions more to get to the point. When you make that decision, you have to pull through. You can't walk away from such a project. So, okay, ich wusste nicht, wie schwierig das ist. Ich habe ein bisschen unterschätzt, vor allem das Timing. Ich glaube, technisch ist nicht das Problem. Das, das kann man immer äh, Zugang haben. Die politische Seite habe ich sehr unterschätzt. Nobody trusts us when we say, this escapement is so efficient and is 100% compatible with the, the standard one, but with the 180% more efficiency. It's unfeasible. No, it's not possible. Uh, but okay, we have this escapement in a small oscillator system and the rewinding speed, the, the power reserve, the movement is so good as a, a normal movement. So you can do that only if you have enough efficiency in this escapement uh, mechanism. You need to take risks, yeah? When there's new technology coming, and to be fair, the silicon technology came out of Karlsruhe from Germany, and then companies start to wall things off with patents, uh, and then you can sit down and say, okay, am I scared, or do I need to try to be competitive down the road, and how much risk are we willing to take? And at the end of the day, risk is, uh, is connected to a price you, you're willing to pay. We took a calculated risk because we knew that if silicon technologies will be the future, and I was pretty sure that it is, then we need to get involved as early as possible, no matter what type of patterns are around. And after 10 years, I would say, we are the ones who really know how to deal with it, and we master it, and this makes our products today competitive. Yeah. Wir müssen Richtung Marketing entwickeln und die meisten Marketingbuden müssen Richtung Technik entwickeln, weil die Uhrenindustrie sich verändert. Die großen Player wollen nicht mehr alle beliefern mit Technik. Es ist wichtig, dass kleine Marken die Verantwortung übernehmen für ihre Produkte und dass das Know-how über die Engineering Teams aufgebaut wird. The problem is, we can make the best technical stuff when nobody knows it. So that's where Landon actually came into the company and he formed this brand, I would say. He formed this project um, into an enjoyable company. You can make the best innovation when nobody knows it is completely useless. Well, I came into the story much further along, yeah. We have to back up a little bit. So I, uh, when I was 19 years old, I was going to business school and I decided that that was not 
the path I wanted to take. I saw a sign on the side of the road that said, you know, learn to scuba dive, move to the Caribbean. And I thought that would be a, a good idea. So I walked into the dive shop, never snorkeled before. And uh, about nine months later, I moved to the Caribbean. I went against the, the status quo of going to college and university. I wanted to swim in the ocean and travel the world. And so that took me up until eventually me and my wife, and uh, we decided to change it and we moved to Europe. And uh, moving to Europe was probably one of the most challenging aspects in my life um, from a cultural and a language perspective. So when I was living in the Caribbean, I had my own company working as a photographer and moving into Europe, it was a different story. I didn't have a master's of photography, so I was not able to practice as a true photographer. It was not allowed. I met a very good friend, Nikki. We started shooting photos and they introduced me to a group of skateboarders. I was into skateboard photography. <laughs> you know? And so through this community, I got into the product side of things. I started distributing products, working with marketers, helping build up their teams, working with professional athletes. And once I'd proven that, I was able to transition into different roles within Europe and where I am today. And I first got to know Andy and Sue in 2017, I believe. And, and we started talking about a different project. And uh, eventually they asked me to come on board and work with them to help them on the marketing side. And so when you start out as a, as a brand, you need to start at the basis of good. And uh, as you move forward, you should always be looking to achieve some level of greatness. So a marketer's job at the end of the day is to find greatness in the company and bring that to the limelight. That's what attracted me to Andy and Sue and the team here when I first got to know them as I saw that there was greatness. That's what was going to be coming. When I came into the watch industry, I was chasing hundreds of a millimeter bike business. And in the watch industry, I, I really had to understand that we are, we are chasing microns. So you squeeze the finger and that's a thousands of a millimeter in between. You have to imagine when you deal with this size of components, um, you know, the temperature in the workshop goes up for one or two degrees, the machine's getting a little bit larger. Out of a sudden, two, three thousands of a millimeter gone, watch doesn't work. And it is as hard as I say here. Die Präzision in der Uhrmacherei ist so hoch und die Dimension so klein, dass man mit normalen Mitteln eigentlich das gar nicht erfassen kann. Also es, von mir aus gesehen hat es tief drin immer noch etwas mit Gespür zu tun. Wir bewegen uns permanent an Maschinenfähigkeiten. Wir brauchen extrem talentierte Leute mit gutem Handling, um diese Präzision, die nötig ist, zu handeln. Entweder hast du das Gespür für kleine Teile oder hast du es nicht. Im Sport wie im Uhrenmachen gibt es ganz viele Gemeinsamkeiten, wie zum Beispiel Kreativität, Agilität, Biss, Commitment. Mir ist natürlich bewusst, dass das ein riesen Kontrast ist. Die Zusammenhänge sind im Mindset. Orange ist eine extrem kleine Firma. Also wir haben nicht die Budgets, wir haben nicht die Power auf dem Markt oder bei Lieferanten irgendwelche Sachen durchzudrücken. Wir müssen immer mit Netzwerk arbeiten, mit kreativen Lösungen äh, den Weg finden, wie wir an unsere Teile und an unser Know-how kommen. Also müssen wir den Weg um die großen Probleme herum finden, genau gleich wie im Rugby. Wenn der zu große Gegner vor dir steht, musst du rundherum. Das ist unsere Stärke. When you want to play Champions League, you better be independent in this industry. And anybody who wants to play in the Champions League will have to have an own mechanical movement because this is what the hobbyists and the buyers and the fan base expect. And we set the bar as a very small company amongst a couple of very big companies in controlling our own movement technology. So we proved that it's possible, that you can do that. And we are super proud of it. Yeah, it is extremely hard to do that, but it's possible. And I believe if you want to call yourself a watch company, you need to prove at least in one really difficult segment to be excellent. 
and we choose probably the most difficult, which is the movement. You know, the smoke and mirrors, we have a little bit around here today, but, you know, I'm a, I can't fake it. You know, I can't fake a campaign. Our most valuable asset is people. So bringing our team to the forefront, yeah, and, and showing them uh, transparently what they're doing, also sharing all of our process with our community base, whether it's us doing YouTube Live or the forum posts that I create, all of this stuff is extremely transparent and I don't know how to do it any other way. People can come in, they can open up the drawers in their company, see what's happening in there, see the parts, see the guy making the watches, see the engineer engineering the next movement, showing them the next project we're working on or them coming and picking up the watch, asking anybody any questions. What happens with transparency is trust. People know that at the end of the day, they can talk to the real people, the guy who's on YouTube, the engineer who's at the desk, the watchmaker in the corner. We get requests for people, you know, having a photo with uh, one of our watchmakers or coming in and, and spending an afternoon with the, the watchmakers and the engineers to see what's going on. My goal is to, to provide them with as much information as possible so that when they have that watch on their wrist, they have some stories to tell. The first time I came to the house of uh, Andy and Tsuyu was standard meeting, no wine, no evening, nothing, just job. But with the time, I understand that these two guys <laughs> are building like a family around them. I am the old man <laughs> on the story, I think so. And you have a lot of young people around them and they are working very hard because it's not just a job. It's a family spirit and we have a story to build all together. The future is very important. I would say that Orage is a, is a group of individuals focused on uh, transparency and innovation. And uh, I guess you could say we're a group of sort of underdogs, yeah? Looking to make our mark in an industry that would rather keep things the status quo. This takes an incredible amount of trust. Um, that comes from the top down without sort of having this CEO designation. I would say he is a CEO that is not a CEO. He's, uh, he's your friend and trust that you're gonna do the best for him and his interest in the company. You know, all these people are here because they want to be here. They are not here because just of a paycheck. They come to this company because we have this core team Zhu has this vision and, and financial feeling. We needed background like Florian, who has this experience from more than 30 years of being in this watch industry. And luckily we found a guy like Jonas, who has this feeling for precision, for these components, for the microns, and a head through the wall mentality to make stuff happen no matter how much resistance is around. And, and this was the original team and then Landon actually came in and added all the stuff we didn't have, all the communication which is necessary to fill this project, this company, this movement with life and tell the story about what we are doing. Where should Orage or where should this end? In the best possible case, it never ends because we will probably find a very good management team which can carry this brand into the future. Because brands are the only thing in the world of business which are here to stay. And if you do this in the right way, I think you can create something which is around for 100 years or 150 years, who knows? So that's, yeah, a, a lasting company which gives people good jobs and produces excellent products which people can enjoy. That's, I think, should be a good target. <laughs>